Cooper, take us away. Cool. I was frozen for a sec there, but welcome to the crossover event that you've all been waiting for. Survivor Michigan, Survivor UVA. We're both here. We're talking about uh, Survivor Michigan's episode that just aired, as well as predictions for the finale that these guys have. And then we're going to look forward to Survivor UVA's uh, premiere of their fourth season. So we got a double event tonight. We're all super excited, but um, yeah, let's go. Let's just do intros first. So uh, Ian, take us away. Uh, hi, I'm Ian. I am the editor for Survivor Michigan season three, Mazed and Confused. Solid. <laughs> Lovely. That is our fantastic editor, Ian, um, who has now edited season two, season three, and a few seasons to come. So You'll see more of him. Uh, the star of this season for us, we'll keep it with Michigan. Emily, how are you? I'm good. Hello. Yep. I'm Emily B. Was on season three. <laughs> You're the star. That's all you have to say? Well, thank you. I mean, I don't like to brag, but yeah. <laughs> all you need is a little like Lorax right next to you, and then we'd be like, we'd be set. Exactly. <laughs> Shouldn't have we'd thrown <laughs> All right, well, we'll move it over to UVA. We have three amazing people with us. Andrew, we'll start with you. All right, hey guys, I'm Andrew. I'm the current host of Survivor at UVA. You won't see me in the premiere. Uh, I was not hosting back then, but yeah, hoster, I'm the host now, and uh, I'll send it over to Mario, I guess. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Mario. I am a season four participant of UVA Survivor, of oh, Survivor at UVA. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm Ryan. I am the editor of season four, two years in the making. We uh, we did our season at the same time as you guys did season three. And also I played on the season. Cool. So expect just a huge edit of Ryan. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all, honestly, every single thing is about me. I tried to make it that way, but... You Some some like real that. bias here, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I try and keep it fair. Hey, if you're going to put in the work to edit it, you might as well put yourself in it. So that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But yeah, so I guess we'll just kick it off since our episode just aired. We'll start with that. Um, the three people who don't really know what happens this season, what do you guys think of the season so far? Do you have any predictions? Just general thoughts. We'll start there. I'm going to just flat out say that this season so far has been like so exciting to watch. You can like truly tell how much work Ian and the rest of you guys have put into it. Um, I don't know, like the quality is fantastic and you guys casted like a really good group of individuals. Like everyone came to play from the get go. I'm sure there have been a lot of comments about that since episode one, but yeah, just absolutely fantastic. I've been blown away by the quality of this. Yeah, I completely agree. I've enjoyed watching all the episodes so far. I watched, I think, part of season one, and I never stuck with it. But this is the main Survivor Michigan season that I've been sticking with, and I've loved every character so far. I have some favorites. I have some people that I'm very anti right now, just because I have personal, I don't know. I'm rooting against them. <laughs> but we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But, yeah, I've enjoyed it all so far. I'm super excited for this finale coming up. Yeah, I just want to echo everything Andrew and Ryan said. I'm only on se uh, the second episode. However, <laughs> I do have my favorites. And um, yeah, I was texting Ryan the other day about how well this um, season was edited. And I just really enjoyed the storyline throughout. And I personally don't normally watch YouTube Survivors, but I'm definitely going to stick with this one, even after I'm spoiled tonight. <laughs> Well, let's just spoil you right now because we're going to get into this. So we just had Brady voted out at the final six. And our final five going to the finale are Cassie, Aaron, Dylan, Devin, and Will. So that is the final five, Survivor Michigan, Mason Confused. Well, I mean, we'll just go right back to Mario. Like, what do you think? Because I don't even think you knew that. So my number one pick was Cassie. So I'm happy about that. But the thing is, Everyone else that you named, I don't even have on my list, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that was 
a bit shocker for me. I'm upset that Ben and Jesse didn't get that far. Um, they were also in my top three. Um, but yeah, I'm happy that Cassie's. I kind of figured that she would go that far. Like she's attractive and she has strategic, you know, she has the whole package. So I don't know how well she's doing now, but they'll be dumb to let her to get to the final three. Okay. If, or final two. I don't know. It is officially a final two. We've announced okay. that on the season as well. Um, but Andrew and Ryan, what do you think of Mario's Cassie winner pick going into the finale? You know, before this episode, I would have called Mario absolutely insane. I would have been like, Cassie? No, 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 no. But there were a lot of foreshadowing in this episode that I noticed. A lot of interesting Cassie confessional confessionals. And I, I kind of have to agree. Like, I kind of see Cassie winning from, like, out of nowhere. And I don't know how people will feel about that. She's been really behind the scenes. But everyone is sort of expecting, uh, I think, a uh, Dylan win or an Aaron win. But I, I could see Cassie winning. I could. Okay, so I'm going to call both of them crazy and say that <laughs> the chances of Cassie winning are like nothing <laughs> in my, in my <laughs> eyes. Um, I don't know. Like, the jury just – I don't think they would respect Cassie personally. Um I think Aaron has the best chances on paper. Um, she saved Brady when he was vulnerable. Uh, those that time when, he, of Ooh. course, he didn't have individual immunity. Um, so she's at the forefront, but everyone knows she's at the forefront. So chances of, of her getting to the final two, I think, are very unlikely. Um, I actually I have written down here that I think Devin and Dylan are in the best spot at the final five right now. Just going forward, they have options. Obviously, Dylan has Devin he can fall back on, or Cassie if he wants to. Um, and Devin has a trio with Will and Dylan. Then he has a duo with Will, also has a duo with uh, with Dylan. So as of now, I think my winner pick is Devin, but that might not be an unpopular opinion. Okay. All definitely, all definitely interesting. I'm, I'm liking how many different uh, perspectives you guys are bringing. So that's, that's solid. Who do we think is, um, if they get to the final two, if they get to plead their case to the jury, who do we think has it like on lock? And who do we think has like no shot maybe? Uh, Ryan, do you I, I yeah, I personally think Aaron, honestly, biggest target at this point. This episode, there was a lot of hyping up of Aaron as a, as a threat. You know, Will talking about how, oh, he doesn't want to sit next to her at the final two. Uh, so I personally see Aaron as, you know, top of the line. If she gets there, she's winning. Next, I would probably say Dylan maybe just because of that, that stealing move a couple of travels back. But I'd say those are the top two for me right now. And I, I see them winning over anyone else if they make it to the end. Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with Ryan. I do think Aaron is the biggest target and she has a lot of moves she can talk about and she also just has a good story from the get-go. Um her tribe bullied her and she didn't drop out of the game. She stayed very strong and it would have been very easy for her to cut ties with Will and just never talk to him again. She continues to talk with him um even though they had a little bit of a back and forth at tribal tonight. Um but yeah, Aaron is Aaron would I think sweep uh, against anybody now, especially now that Brady's out. Like Brady was the one person I think she loses against, and he's gone. But you know that was a shield she could have hid behind. So it's too bad. Okay, for me, y'all know I don't know much, but I didn't like Aaron. She's at the bottom of my list, number seventeen, and that's only because I know Richard went home, and then. <laughs> <laughs> I rechecked my list, and Dylan's number four. So I hope Dylan um, wins. He has a really good edit in the first two episodes. His little short clips; those are just hilarious to me. Um, so I really hope that he wins. I don't know anything about his game so far, but he just seems like a very personable person, and that's the type of players that I like. You know, the people that can make people feel good. Yeah, I'm actually. I like that as a segue to pop over to Ian and Emily for a second because. It's interesting that, like, Mario doesn't – he's only on, like, episode two, so he has, like, the early Aaron edit and, like, kind of the early, like, peak, like, comedy Dylan edit. What have you guys, like, seen throughout the season of their, like, 
or Emily, what did you see kind of while it was happening, those two changing their games? And Ian, what did you see kind of in the production, like behind the scenes editing of how you gave those two their like story arc? Um, yeah, well, I think Erin definitely had a very different first half of the game than she did second half of the game. Um, like people wanted her out at the beginning. Uh, nobody really trusted her. Uh, she was very much floating in the middle and not in a good way. Um, and then a second half of the game, I think she really like comes into her own and um, her place in the middle is like way more advantageous and like everyone needs her kind of, you know, as their, you know, an addi addition on their side. Um, and then she's like got this relationship with Brady that she builds that like not everyone knows about at first. Um, and she like works her way up from the bottom, which I think is pretty impressive. So she's definitely got a turnaround in the season. And then Dylan, D Dylan was like, I don't know. Um, yeah, I I think everyone kind of saw Dylan as, you know, like a fun guy, a personable guy, but like, and obviously a physical challenge threat um, for the first majority part of the game, but not any type of, you know, strategic mastermind. And then later, obviously now we see, you know, his alliance with Devin, which like nobody, like I didn't know about, Elisa didn't know about. Um, so like they kept that pretty on the down low and I think he's in a pretty good spot right now. Yeah. Um, from an editing standpoint, you know, you start at it and before we start editing it, you lay out all 18 people. What is their story? How can we tell each person's story in an effective manner? And in those early episodes, you're trying to be like really judicial with what time you give to what. When you get down to it, there's like five, six people. It's a lot easier to give everybody the time they need. But in those early episodes, you're trying to just be like, how can we tell this as efficiently as possible for 18 people? So, you know, some people like Will, it's an e almost an easier story to tell because you know that Will's just going to be a big character the whole time. You know every episode you're going to have Will kind of going off on somebody or another. People like Aaron and Dylan is a little more complicated because when you start out, you're going into it as an editor, knowing that they're going to be really important players in like the merge episodes, but in those pre-merge episodes, they don't have a lot of strategic story necessarily, but you need to make sure you got enough of them that you can still like, like them and kind of attach yourself to them in a way so that when they become more important, you can like feel like that was a natural progression. So like really, the Dylan thing was an idea we had that we'd put these little Dylan sound bites, which he filmed at one point just into different places because we were like, it would just be really funny. And we were like, it'd be really funny if we ended every episode with, wow, that was something. And it really like caught on and people really liked it. And honestly, I wasn't sure how it was going to respond. I think if like the first episode or two, if people had been like, this is kind of dumb, we don't like it, we might have toned it down. But people really took to it. So we kind of played into it as it went on. And um, with Erin, you just knew that she was going to be important. But in the early episodes, it's kind of just a lot of people sort of making fun of her and stuff. And you have to make sure that you tell it in such a way that she becomes the hero of her own story at a certain point, you know? Yeah. And I think that's where it's so interesting that, like, Aaron is literally last on Mario's list right now because, like, all he's seen is Aaron just getting shit on left and right. <laughs> and she could get voted out at any single tribal council. And now we're at the final five, and we have Andrew and Ryan being like, yeah, if Aaron gets to the end, like, she's winning. Like, like her story along the way is, like, I I'm excited for – for you to go back and watch that Mario. So, I mean, Ben, I think uh, sometime around the episode, Ben gets voted out. He has a confessional where he says, well, I'm t I'll take Aaron to the end because no one's going to vote for her. Like there's no chance at all. And to take from there to now, it really shows us the progression of her as a, as a character on the show, which is a really exciting thing to see, I think as a, as an editor. 100%. Um, while we're kind of talking about looking backwards on the season, do you guys, have any favorite moments that have been or funny moments? Um, really anything that like stuck out to you from any of the past episodes that you've watched. And actually, Emily, you can weigh on in on this too about just the favorite moments from like being there during the season too. Um, well, personally, I think one of my favorite moments was um, it was the night after the tribal where Devin and Eliza played like the all the whole like fake idol thing and all of that and they both survived and it was like really late and Devin wait 
Oh. Um, at, where did you go? Oh. <laughs> Cooper's gone. Cooper's <laughs> gone. I'll keep going. Um, I'll just, go, just go on. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it was at, right after I was like 100% sure almost that one of them was going home. And then Devin calls me and I'm like in the library and I freak out and like run to Elisa's house. And then we have this whole thing. And Elisa tells us that tells me that she had the idol the whole time. And I absolutely freak out because I had no idea. And um, then the whole thing where like Dylan is texting them. And I think that was yeah that was like one moment i think that like sticks out in my head a lot and honestly all of those like 2 a.m alliance meetings so many 2 a.m alliance meetings in Louise's house well yeah honestly emily watching savu savu like i think everyone loves savu savu right like y'all as a unit i think were so rootable and so fun and going way back with crouch andrew uh andrew crouch and the rock draw and he's like fuck it we're going to rocks like it's just, it's, you guys have such a great storyline. I actually had a question for you specifically at your boot episode, because you're the first of the Sabu Sabus to fall. Um, you say to the jury, well, now Brady has another vote. When you said that, was that, um, were you being legit, like, I'm voting for Brady? Or were you trying to give the other Sabu Sabus, like, a little lifeline to, uh, to attach to? Yeah, definitely the latter. Um, <laughs> I had like planned this out with Eliza earlier in the day because um, at that point, like Emily P had already been voted out, and like she had said that too. And we we're like, okay, I need to like think of something good to say because I'm about to be voted out of the game. Um, and we kind of just wanted to put, you know, a little bit more of a target on Brady if we could, because then that takes the heat off any of the Sabu Sabu people, and it would. Oh, and you know, Dylan and Cassie were already thinking about taking him out, so it'd just like kind of be that little extra thing. So that's what I was going for there. Totally get it's it. So, it's so interesting how that just catapulted the entire like elevation of Brady's threat level, and you know, the past couple episodes of Brady just like needing to win immunity so bad to stay in, and unfortunately, he didn't this week. So. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny because I don't know. I don't know if anyone actually like believed that he was the biggest threat to win. It was just sort of the perception <laughs> of the threat to win, and everyone kind of just kept like going with that because I'm like, well, if he's the perception to win, then like I'm not the perception to win. So, yeah, perception is reality. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um. Any. Well, I guess I'll also throw this in right now. Um. But anybody who's uh, listening to this, like throw in the chat like questions um and then ian i can't really see the chat right now but if you just want to like if you see a question come in just like pop in uh, but yeah questions for me ian emily any of the uh our lovely uva people here um yeah at any time please we'll, we'll try to get to it so um but yeah i, I do want to kind of go back on something i mentioned but what do you guys think was like funniest moments from the season what were like because we definitely tried to throw in some comedy um, it was a it was a dark season here and there, so we tried to give it some uplifting vibes. Um, but I'm curious what you guys thought were like some of the better moments. Number one for me has got to be Cooper shotgunning. I think I don't remember who it was with. I think it was with maybe Brady. <laughs> I think it was, uh, it was Andrew. Was in the game. Oh, it was, it was Crouch. Andrew Crouch. It was Crouch. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a great all time. He put you. Crouch James lived. <laughs> Crouch lived across the street from us at the time. And so Cooper and I were roommates, if you guys, or we were, if you guys didn't know. So Crouch lived across the street with us. I think while this was going on, he was like, Cooper, like, come shotgun with me. And then just completely embarrassed Cooper in front of 4,000 people or whoever watched that episode. So it was good to see. Hilarious. While we are on uh, camera, I will say that that is that was double the size of a normal beer. I always have to clarify this. And Crouch just makes it look like half the size, and I get about halfway through it. And it's respectable. And then I'm like, there's a whole nother beer left to go. So sure. I will throw that out there. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> I always have to kind of throw that in there. Um, but yeah, Andrew, Mario, any any moments that stuck out to you? Well, I'll go back to like kind of a, I don't know. I think that she had a pretty good pre-merge edit. But Jesse's little word wall that was behind her. And I know that that wasn't something that you guys had any control over. But it constantly changing. I think at one week it just says like "fuck you" or something like that. Like, it's it was just funny. I thought she was a really fun character. 
Um, and it was it was a shame that she was the the merge boot. Was she the merge boot or right before the merge? She was merge boot, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a shame that that happened, but. Yeah, she was such a fun character to watch, especially because she doesn't know the show at all, but she is, meanwhile, very perceptive, and she immediately catches on to, like, Will bullshitting her and picking the side between uh, Ben and Will. So, yeah, she, she was a great character, very fun. We're getting some questions here in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, Austin Zavaki, I think that's how it's pronounced, is, has a question for Andrew. As a host, who do you think gives the most entertaining answers at the Michigan Tribal Councils? Um, well, I'll go off this most recent episode, and I think Aaron gives very entertaining uh, answers, whereas I think, I think Cassie and uh, Devin are a little bit quieter, a little more reserved. I feel like Aaron gives good answers, and then her and Will had that little spat with one another, but even then, like Will was a little quieter, and Aaron was the one that was really like a little more upfront about her feelings. And that's always something to appreciate as a host. I'm, I'm sure Cooper feels the same way. It sucks when you have to push somebody to give emotional answers. I would much rather someone interrupt me and just spill everything they're thinking rather than me having to have like a Q and A session with them. So yeah, Aaron is a great tribal counselist. Um, ben as well. I mean, the email that, that was amazing. I know it's on his way out, but yeah, he was great as well. So no, those would be my two picks for the season. And Crouch, of course. Yeah. Cooper, from you being there, who, who did you feel was a really good uh, standout at Tribal Council? I think I would have to agree with basically who you said. I think I would also put kind of Will up there as well. I think Aaron, Ben, and Will. Like, basically, Tormenta, absolute gold. Absolute gold. But then you also have the Sabu Sabu and Tafiti like joint tribal council where things get heated and everybody's good at that tribal council. Like it's there really aren't too many like dud people or tribal councils this season. So honestly, good all over the board. Um, but Mario, anything in the first couple episodes that stuck out to you? Yeah, I have to agree with Andrew. I was a big fan of Jesse. She's number three on my list because of like her not knowing about the game, but also just getting completely bad vibes from Will, because I think it was translated very well in the editing, um, because I also didn't like Will at all. But, <laughs> but also, um, just the partying scenes with like Ben just taking a shot and saying, oh, let me say this before I black out. I just think that those are like really good additions to the um, editing. Uh, I'm going to jump in here real quick. Can everyone mute themselves when they're not talking? We're getting some uh, feedback of sorts. Actually, the feedback is coming from Cooper. Um, <laughs> but uh, it just kind of is what it is. So when you're not talking, Cooper, could you mute yourself? Because we were getting some mad feedback from your mic. And he's gone. <laughs> and he's gone. Okay. Uh, well, there's a few other questions in here. Joy McDonald asks, how hard is it to edit an episode? Uh, I guess I can take that. And then you want to you wanna jump in first, Ryan, and then I'll go after you? You can go ahead and do it first. I'll talk. I would you. say pretty hard. Uh, over here, we've got a team of about uh, seven or eight of us working on all of them. Mainly, it's three of us: me, Cooper, and this guy Sam, who was on season two. Sam and Cooper watch a lot of the videos and help kind of pick out, you know, the good parts. And then I do a lot of the main editing. We have a whole team of people who are helping to get these clips in order and stuff. And it's a lot of work. I mean, I've called it my full time job this summer for season three, and I would not call that an inaccurate statement. So. Well, I wish they could pay me for this. They sadly cannot. So yeah, I'd say each episode is like probably, I don't know, 30 to 40 hours of work. I don't know. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, no, I to I like completely agree. I would say I've, I've estimated 24 hours in the past, but that doesn't involve all of the technical difficulties that I have literally all the time with editing. Um, in, in my side, I'm pretty much the only one who's editing, but I have people help me like summarize things and storyboards. So that's actually really nice. But again, wish I could be paying, wish I could get paid for this because it's not really helping me too much with my career in the future. It's just for the fun of it. Yeah, I would advise if you can get people to help you do it, the more the merrier. Cooper, the question was, how hard is it to edit an episode? Do you have any comments on this? Well, um, since I have recently gotten my full-time job and am working every day, I have basically gone from doing 
uh, a lot every week to zero in the past month. So I would say it is more than a full-time job to edit an episode, honestly. Uh, and then I think our last question before we get into the UVA side of things, Melbourne Survivor, shout out Melbourne Survivor. You guys should all watch that. Another great, great show. Uh, they ask, what do you guys use to edit? We use Adobe Premiere. I think you guys also do too, I assume. Right? Yeah, we, we've talked about this, I think. We yeah. also use Premiere, which seems to be useful, but also, as I mentioned, I've had so many difficulties with it, just like glitches and it's really frustrating, but I haven't learned anything else, so I stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Premiere is kind of like, I feel like the standard for like, like non-professional, but like, the what the most non-professional video editing software would be for anyone who isn't like straight up in the industry i feel like that's what everyone uses is adobe premiere so do you guys want to talk a little bit about the survivor uva yeah let's do it half an hour to the big premiere (laughs) yeah so obviously the premiere's in 30 minutes uh nine o'clock but I told Cooper when when it first started airing this summer, Cooper and I were in uh, communication with one another, and I said, I feel like our season four is similar to y'all season three, where almost everyone from the get-go is playing, and they're playing hard. Um, and I know Mario and Ryan can probably attest to that as well. They were <laughs> they were there. They were playing. So, yeah. How about Mario and Ryan? Why don't you guys speak to that? How do you guys feel like it compares to – their season three do you guys feel like the same vibe that they're very similar oh yeah definitely also from watching your all's 30 minute tribal this the stress that was involved with that it brought me back to my days playing survivor um also a lot of people might notice that this is season four and we only have season one so (laughs) just to clear things up season four is one of the most organized seasons we have so and some of the best cast. Not to not to hate on the other two or three seasons before this, but the fact that I'm in it isn't the only reason that I'm editing it. It's also very, very entertaining to watch. Yeah, I have to agree with Ryan. Um, you know, casting me was probably the best decision that they could have made. Even though I was technically an alternate, um, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Um, I was the true alternate. Oh yeah, you're talking to two alternates here. Um, but yeah, it was pretty fast paced. Um, alliances forming day one, um, lots of strategy, and I didn't know what I was doing, but somehow, uh, it happened. <laughs> I don't even know like what what happened. Like um, in the beginning, I I was just there. Cooper, you want to make some some predictions here? I I looked through their Instagram announcements earlier. I have my winner pick. I also have mine. I, I briefly scrolled through uh, the cast. Emily, I don't know. Have you seen the UVA cast or no? Wait. I also briefly scrolled through. Didn't have time to watch all the videos, but I I have someone in mind. Yeah. Okay. My winner. Mine is mine is Hannah. Wait, no shit, me too. <laughs> oh, well, she's waiting. It's a done deal now. It's been decided. She might be watching this right now. Yeah, that's a great pick. I think, yeah, earlier she comments in the in the chat. So, yeah. I, in the uh, Genki's little uh, video about her, he said that she was, like, basically the full package, but she doesn't know the game. To me, that's like she's giving off very Jesse, very Mallory vibes. Like, you know, she's going to come in unassuming, not a huge threat early on. No one's going to be targeting her early on, then just slowly gain a grip over the game. And before they know it, she's sitting there at the end, just just dominating, just raking in the jury votes. I was also very intrigued by the fact that she ate a worm for $5. I think that bodes very well for her for challenges. That's true. Like eating challenges, she's there. Like she'll eat worms. She'll do anything for money, clearly. So that includes winning the game if she wants to get 100 bucks. Yeah, she she was a fan of the challenge uh, more so than Survivor when it when she had applied. Um, and I've personally never seen the challenge, so I don't really know the similarities. But as far as I can tell, they are pretty closely related. But yeah, so she wasn't a huge fan of Survivor, but uh, yeah, she has since become a pretty big fan. I would say. Okay, I liked Hannah. I okay. I think I'm thinking of the right person. Is Aaron the the senior on the cast? She is. She is. I think she's the only one. 
Yes, I'm going to throw in Aaron as my winner pick with a caveat that if she can make it past the first couple of votes of like all the freshmen going back to their dorms together, that she will be great. I forget exactly what Genki said about her, but I remember really liking it. So I'm going to throw in Aaron as my winner pick. I'm also yeah. going to... Oh, no, no, Ian, talk. Go, go ahead. I was going to say that I'm also just going to go to a complete limb and say that uh, Mario and Ryan both make the merge. And my main evidence for this is that I don't think Ryan would want to edit the season if he did not make the merge. So I think Ryan 100% made the merge. That's why he's so excited. Like a half hour tribal, he said earlier, like it's giving him flashbacks. That would never happen pre-merge. I think Ryan 100% made the merge. Mario as well. He's striking me like a very knowledgeable player from this brief conversation I've had with him. So I'm thinking the two of them are maybe a, maybe a merge power duo, I'll even say. I cannot okay. confirm nor deny that. <laughs> yeah, you right. My, my hot see. take is going to be that they throw Andrew in as a twist at the merge, and then he <laughs> runs the game. But he's a, he's a runner-up. He loses to Aaron. So that's my, that's my hot take for the season. Yeah, wouldn't that be how could I how could I enter the game and not win though, Cooper? Like it, that would be impossible. So, uh, <laughs> Andrew enters, he makes it to the end, he wins. Yeah. So you heard it here first. Obviously, like Ryan said, like this is actually our fourth season. Um, I I had played on season three, so I was just the season right before them, and uh, season two was the previous fall, so a year before this this season had uh, been going on. But yeah, I'll go back. Cooper, you said, Aaron, for anybody in the chat that has actually seen our first season, um, she was fan or she was friends with Sam Henson, who who played in season one. He had ended up referring her. Um, and Sam is a fantastic, <laughs> a fantastic guy, fun guy to watch, fun player. So yeah, you you guys will get some good gameplay out of these people. Um it's going to be really fun. <laughs> Haley says that's some meta analysis there, Ian. <laughs> um, yeah, I, work, I, work with, I got to work with what I got, you know. I know. I mean, I, I completely understand. But yeah, I mean, great picks, honestly. And Genki's cast assessment was made like a day after we casted, maybe a day before shooting. I don't know. So it's not. I think, like, I think it might have been the day of the challenge. I'm not sure. Yeah. So. But doesn't it won't give anything away. But those are the, you know, the pre pre thoughts, and you know, some of them are surprisingly accurate. Oh, Genki filmed this before the season started. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that is so this is, a real that, is impr- that is some real forethought. When we when we had ours <laughs> released, we had Cooper film them like a day or two before <laughs> we released them, so we had to have him like wipe his brain of everything he knew about about the season. Yeah. I didn't give Genki, any spoilers. Genki, Genki loves the cast assessments. He does them all the time. <laughs> Uh, he's, he graduated two years ago and he's still hitting us with some cast assessments. So Genki's great. Um, great host also. He's very fun to watch. He really brings out some of these people in tribal councils. So we have some exciting tribals. Um, it's, it's flat out. It's just going to be a really fun season to watch. And Ryan has put in a lot of work. Uh, so props to him. Ian, you know how difficult it is to edit and Ryan is basically doing it all on his own here. So. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. That's, I yeah, doing it all on your own. It's, it's it's rough, man. You just you just living in a little editing world there. Yeah, you guys crank out season after season. Hopefully, this won't be our only season. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll continue to edit after this one airs. Uh, do you guys have like what? Are you guys still like filming seasons now, up to the modern day? Yeah, Ryan, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we, I think, I don't know, we're on season eight right now. I think, I don't know how far y'all are. I think you guys are very, very close to us. Like, we started around a very similar time. Uh, yeah. Right now, right now our season's completely online, which is unfortunate. But we're still going strong. We've had some returning seasons in there, so that's always fun. But, yeah. Yeah, and I think the Survivor community or college Survivor community in general got a lot of experience this summer uh, with online games. I mean, there is so many happening um, with people from from Ohio State to, uh, to UVA, up to Michigan, like all over the place. Um, Maryland, of course, involved. So we like now have some, excuse me, experience playing through Zoom, but obviously it's, it's not the same. Um, 
like with a face-to-face -face game, like you can read body language, you know who's meeting up with who sometimes. Not the same with Zoom, but we're making the most out of it and we hope our cast will as well. But are you guys, uh, well, I know Cooper, you've since graduated. Ian, I would assume you as, as well, but are you guys running a season this, uh, uh, this fall? We're actually not. I'm on, I'm one of the executive producers now. Um, and we decided to take a pause this semester um, rather than do a totally online one and then like reevaluate next semester to see if we can do one. But we're, we've, we've filmed through season six now. So our next one is going to be season seven. I will say jumping in a bit on the, uh, yeah, the, the fact that all these different colleges were doing these online ones together over the summer. I think I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm just going to say this now and maybe one day somebody, somebody else will make it happen. I hope someone, anybody from Maryland, OSU, UConn, Boston, whoever you are watching this, somebody now that technology exists, they can do a cross college survivor. They can do a, they could do, we could do a college survivor season that we film and put up with people from all these different colleges. That would be amazing. That'd be so cool. Somebody in the, the all stars to end all all stars for college yeah. survivors. The, yeah, the ultimate like colleges at at epic war or something. I don't even know what you come up with some kind of crazy name for it. It'd be insane. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Honestly, I know we had talked about we had talked about wanting to do like some sort of camping thing with other colleges, like other college survivors, maybe like a weekend sort of thing. I feel like that would be so fun. Oh yeah, that'd be great too. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think it will happen in the future, honestly. When people can like start meeting up and like do everything again, uh I think that's definitely been tossed out and I think it will happen in the future. But I, I, while I'm we're really... on kind of this I was gonna say while we're on kind of this like talking about all the different college providers that exist there i was gonna pop it back to like andrew and the uva guys like why why should somebody who's um just like kind of trying to get into college survivor watch this season for you guys specifically with so many other college survivors now out well i would say one one of the biggest um one of the best things about our season is our production quality um as i said this season I chose to edit because it's the most organized. We have all of our footage in place, which is really, really nice. It makes it a lot easier. Um, and then it, it honestly feels very, very similar, I'll say, to a real episode of Survivor. Similar editing style. So you you might get that vibe if you watch tonight. And I, I'm sure like a lot of other Survivors, you guys do it too. You keep the music the same. So it, it it's a great, it's a great, um, similar thing to the real thing the real survivor which unfortunately right now we're missing we don't have a season of survivor to watch so why not tune in yeah <laughs> yeah we're like truly with real survivor being on the back burner they're not filming right now um we're like in the golden era of college versions <laughs> um i know yukon is i think releasing in two weeks and i'm pretty sure syracuse is coming out in a few weeks as well so not only uh, do we, oh, and Maryland is currently airing. And so yeah. we have Ball State is amazing soon too. Yeah. Right. We have y'all's amazing finale coming up in a week. Maryland is releasing on Mondays. We'll be releasing on Wednesdays. Um, yeah. There's just so many great versions of co uh, these colleges survivors that even if you don't dig ours, like there's so much coming up to be excited about. And I know that there's like some like, maybe not stigmas towards college survivor, but like who wants to get into a college survivor show, but it's the drama that comes from it. Honestly, I think is a little bit better than real survivor. Real survivor will edit out a lot of the like fun bits um, to make people look good. And I don't think college survivor does that. Um, <laughs> I mean, you guys, we see Ben, Emily P and will just absolutely going in on Aaron in the first few weeks and like really nasty stuff and you guys don't hide it um obviously we see austin's blow up post aliza vote like we don't hide anything right and so you see a lot of that in our season we've seen a lot of it in y'all season and you know the drama is just <laughs> the absolute best yeah just to add on to that like editing a college survivor you have no narrative that you need to show you don't need to make certain players look good if they make it far you can make them look terrible um also we're not restricted to uh to a 60 minute with commercials type thing like we can throw in whatever we want 
to tell a story. And I think that's one of the best thing that makes College Survivor better. Well, better, I'll say, than Real Survivor. So I, I actually, I want to throw it back to y'all, Michigan, for a little bit. Um, I had a question um, that just came up through this. But for all three of you guys, Ian as an editor, Cooper as the host, and Emily B as the player, and I guess as an exec member now, um, while season three was airing, was there anybody that now in hindsight, like you were surprised has become a popular player? Because you guys have a lot of people that watch your season, right? And so you guys all saw it happen live. Emily, you were involved with it live. Are you guys surprised at anyone's popularity? I would say actually that the biggest one I, we, I wasn't expecting was uh, Jesse, I think, for me at least. Because I think just the sense, like I think when, when I was editing it, uh, when you're editing it at a certain point, you, you like, you kind of have your favorites, but you sort of have to like push it aside and kind of like forget about it sort of in the way you're doing it. And so you kind of just fall into the, like, here's the role each person sort of plays in each episode type of deal. And then right. Like Jesse had like tons and tons of fans in the first couple episodes to the point that at one point I was concerned that there wasn't like going to be enough Jesse content in like episodes four five and six. Cause I was like, Oh my God, like we did not realize how popular she was going to be. And, um, and, uh, there was one episode, I think episode four, where she wasn't in it that much. And it was because her tribe didn't go to tribal and she didn't film a lot that week. And people in the comments were like, where's Jesse, where's Jesse. And you're like, I, I can't even put any more of her in there, but I would, if I could, I think for me, that was her. And on the flip side, I was surprised by how much heat Chloe and Cassie got at the Andrew tribal. I was there when it actually happened. And then I was editing and stuff and we knew it was heated, but like, with all the years that have passed and to see that everyone was more or less just friends. Now I kind of like had forgotten how visceral it feels in that moment. And I was surprised by the kind of vitriolic reaction to that online because truly I just thought it was pretty funny when I was there, <laughs> which obviously some people took it like really seriously. So I would say those are the two biggest surprises for me. Emily, want to comment on that tribal? <laughs> <laughs> on the on the tribal, God. Well, I mean, I didn't think the tribal was very funny when it happened. I guess, um, but it is true. I mean, we're all friends now. Like, I love Chloe now. Um, but uh, I guess okay. Wait, in terms of like surprises, I think now, like knowing everyone's game, I think I think it sort of like makes sense which players have been really like popular with the audience, but. I think from like a player perspective in season three, um, I think people like, like I feel like people in the comments, uh, they like really recognize like Devin's game at this point um, as like being a really good game. And a lot of people say like, oh, I feel like Devin's my winner pick right now. Um, and from like being inside the game, like none of the players were really thinking that at all. Um, and like, I remember like having conversations in the jury, like at this point in the game with these people who are left and, you know, everyone's talking about everyone's who's everyone who's left and like pros and cons and stuff. And like p the perception in the game definitely wasn't that Devin was playing a good game with a lot of people. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I would have also said Devin and like you said, it, it I think it kind of happened that way because of. Nobody really knows about his thing with him and Dylan right now. And that like in itself is a lot of Devin's game and what he's using. So I guess in the finale, we'll see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, from a player perspective, I can totally see how it was Devin or even Dylan for similar reasons in the sense that like people didn't really know he was also. Yeah, I, I'd agree, Cooper. I would actually say that um, definitely – on the show the characters in the show don't see dylan and devin the same way that the fans see them when they're watching it you know i think for large portions of even the merge the fans are watching it going oh dylan and devin kind of have this little alliance but if you're you know will or you're aaron or cassie even or anybody who got voted out of the previous couple episodes you just kind of have kept seeing them as dylan and devin who aren't doing anything you know so i think that definitely is a, a difference between how uh you play the show and then how you watch it afterwards. Yeah, I think honestly, one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to in y'all's finale is just seeing what the perception of the jury is. I'm I'm so curious to see 
who they actually think is playing a good game. <laughs> because the way it, I mean, obviously all the people that are watching, they're going to have their opinions. But the way that the jury reacts is totally independent of that. And so I, I just feel like college juries can be super, can just be like a different thing in and of itself. So I'm just excited to see where that takes the finale. The jury round table definitely gets very interesting. <laughs> I was also going to pop it over to that, Ian, because we this is the first season we've actually started now kind of doing some jury roundtables like you see in Big Brother for those who watch that. Um, but I don't even think, Ian, we've, we haven't even talked about if we're going to try to make that its own separate thing or like tag it on the end of the episode or just like what we're, or if we're going to even do anything with it. But the footage for it is not great. I'm not going to lie. So I don't I don't think we'll be seeing it in this finale. It might be something that we can, you know, put out there at some point as like a fun little bonus thing. Um, whoever was filming that day there, there's like there's like one what it is, is the way they did. It, we had two people hosting the roundtable. And then we had like half the jury on each side. And for some reason, we only have the angle of like a third of the jury. So it's like, you can only see like Aliza and like Ben and like Emily, I think, or something like that. So it's like, you can't see anybody else. So it's kind of like, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do with it. But that isn't to say that we'll never be able to use jury roundtables in the future. But I'm not, I'm not sure about this one. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. <laughs> Classic Michigan missing footage, honestly, especially this season. Holy cow. I yeah, there, do it. there are some, if there's ever moments where you're like, how come we can't cut back to Cooper here? Because it does not exist. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's kind of enough on Michigan. We've definitely talked a lot about it. Anything that you guys want to end with from UVA? Um, I was going to say, like, we, I got to get, I got to get my TV stuff. I got to get my HDMI. I got to, I got to get my popcorn ready, you know? So um not much for me i'm just very excited for everyone to get to see it and see all the hard work that ryan's put in and uh the rest of the people that have helped him summarize confessionals and go through footage it was a lot of footage um in the background there actually with mario is is lauren who also played so we'll get to see her a little bit hey lauren <laughs> lauren andrew said hey you guys have the but yeah, I, I just want to say I'm changing my winner pick right now. It's officially Lauren. I'm saying I'm putting it in. Aaron's I don't even I forgot about her already. It's Lauren. She's, she's Cooper, there, do you, Cooper, do you want to make it blind interesting? Let's each put five bucks on somebody, whoever goes farther mm. right now. I, I mean I'll this. stick with Aaron. I'll stick with Aaron, sure. Okay, I'll stay I'll stick with uh, Hannah then. Okay. Okay. That's fine. I'll stick we with will see Mara. how that turns out. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm yeah. super excited to obviously like watch the season. I'm I know how much work goes into these, so like obviously like props to you guys for getting this out. I'm so excited to see Mario and Ryan both in the season and playing. I hope you both do well. So best of luck. Thank you. Thank you for your, your good wishes. <laughs> I hope I do well too. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you guys for hosting us uh, on this tonight. That was very much appreciated and. Uh, it's been a great ride for y'all season and I know you guys have one more episode. You guys got the finale, totally looking forward to that. And then hopefully it can be less than a year wait for y'all's next season. Maybe it can come out just right after the finale. Who knows? <laughs> but, <laughs> a rolling base. No promises, but we can promise you that will not happen. <laughs> but, no, thank you guys so much. Uh, it's been great talking with you guys tonight. It's same, been such same. an honor. Same to you guys. Yeah. Hope you guys have an awesome season. If you ever yeah. want to talk again, let us know. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this this broadcast here. If everyone wants to say a quick quick goodbye, sign off. I don't know. <laughs> Peace out. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, everyone hit up the survivor yeah. survivor yeah. UVA YouTube <laughs> right now. The biggest Thanks thing on that. TV tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Prime time. <laughs> they moved Big Brother to last night just for this. That's what I heard. Just for this. Exactly. That's true. That's actually true, though. All right. See you guys. All right. Bye, guys.